Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that you are all well. As we continue in yet another week of self-isolation, the seventh, I am strangely enough reminded of Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Now you may ask why that is, and I will tell you. As it turns out, as a kid, I read a lot of comic books, and certain elements from them really stick in my head. For Superman, the Fortress of Solitude was a sort of weekend getaway. It's usually pictured made of ice or crystal and found in the Arctic, the Antarctic, the Andes, or a rainforest, somewhere remote and secluded. It's a place to be away from people, to be alone and retreat from the world. Under normal circumstances, we all long for times to get away, to get away from things, to go on retreats, special times alone to rest, vacation, and have time for ourselves, times to recharge our batteries. That is why all this alone time, and I realize for some families it's not really alone time, but that this social isolation that we've been experiencing is not the same thing as choosing to be alone. A healthy application of solitude includes a return to all the social interactions that it benefits. We are experiencing a forced isolation, for good reason, but I'm not sure that our homes feel like a fortress of solitude, where fortress implies strength and being fortified against disturbance. I think that we are all a little bit disturbed, honestly, by being home so long. Everyone I speak with is longing for a return to normal social interaction that makes up our lives as human beings. So what are we to do? I think the only good option is to embrace the solitude. One of my favorite spiritual writers is Thomas Merton, who was a monastic. Throughout his life, Merton wrote a great deal about the importance of solitude in the spiritual life. He describes solitude as the doorway by which a person enters into the mystery of God. Merton believed that solitude is soul cleansing and as necessary as silence is for language, as air is for the lungs, and food for the body. In his writings, he stressed that experiences of solitude clarify the need to love others, and in loving others, draw a person back to God in contemplative solitude. So then, Rather than focus on the downside of forced solitude, perhaps we can use it to benefit our spiritual lives and our relationships with others through prayer and meditation. Look at this time as an opportunity to look deeply at the things that matter and where God is present in your life journey. St. Teresa of Avila a 14th century mystic, called the spiritual life an interior castle in which we develop our relationship with God through prayer and service. Perhaps this period of social isolation can become for us a fortress of solitude, a castle, a place and a time to grow in our faith an awareness of God in our lives. Set aside some time each day to read your Bible and pray. Use your prayer book to pray the daily office or go online to the Brotherhood of St. Gregory and their online version of the daily office. It's really not that hard to do. 
We'll be reading from Matthew's Gospel shortly, and in that passage, Jesus says, Go into your room and shut the door and pray. We have time. Time is one thing I think that all of us have access to during this pandemic. Open your hearts and minds and enter that fortress and draw strength from God who is there inside of you to support you and love you through the days ahead. Together now, I invite you to pray with me. If you have your prayer book handy, grab it, and we will be using the noonday service once again from the prayer book, beginning on page 103, and I'm going to substitute the Psalms and the scripture reading. The Psalms that we'll, we will be using are Psalm 46, found on page 649, and Psalm 62, found on page 669. So if we can open up to Noonday. And perhaps we can just take a few moments of silence together. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The first psalm is Psalm 46, found on page 649 of the prayer book. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at the tumult, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. <clears throat> Come now and look upon the works of the Lord, what awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes wars to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. <coughs> Together now we will read Psalm 62, found on page 669 of the prayer book. For God alone my soul in silence waits. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assault me to crush me, all of you together, as if you were a leaning fence, a toppling wall? They seek only to bring me down from my place of honor. Lies are their chief delight. They bless with their lips, but they curse with their hearts. For God alone my soul in silent waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. 
pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a, but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in exhor exhortation. In robbery take no empty pride. Through wealth, the wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things, and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I offer now the time for you to offer your intercessions and prayers. We continue to pray for all those who suffer and are struggling with the coronavirus, that God will be their strength in their time of trouble and will heal them. We also continue to pray for all those who are working towards serving those who are sick, the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare professionals, the first responders, that God will support them and encourage them in their work and keep them safe and healthy. And Lord, we continue to pray for the scientists and the researchers who are working for ways to deal with this disease so that your healing work may be done in this world and that we may return to some semblance of a normal life. And Lord, I pray for all the people of St. James Parish. I pray that you be with them and support them and encourage them in this difficult time, that they may know your presence in their daily lives.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please know that you are all in my prayers, and I am longing to see you again. Hopefully that will be soon. And may God bless you and keep you in the week ahead.